What's up guys, how you doing? Today I wanted to show you how I made this cool Vellum ghost animation in Houdini. So here we are in Houdini, created a new project and let's create a geo node and call it sim. In here we can bring in our animation as collider using an agent node and switching it to FBX, selecting an animation. I'm gonna use the salsa dancing animation I have here. Uh, it's from Mixamo. Anything else works as well. Just get something you want as collider and then you're good to go. So as you can see, you barely see anything because it's really small down here. So we're gonna home all and here we have it. I picked this spooky, <laughs> spooky looking uh, character because I thought it would maybe fit the simulation. So if we play, you can see nothing happens. That's because we have to select the Mixamo clip. And now if we play, it dances. Exactly what we want to happen. But before we can use this as collider, we have to unpack it. And we're gonna use an agent unpack for that wire this one in and here we go. Now if we display it we can also see the UV even though we're not going to use the UV. So let's place a null and call it collider. Now we're going to use a grid as a ground collider. Let's call this one ground and merge them. So we have our collider. Now we need our cloth. For that, we're gonna place a grid as well. Make it 2.5, uh, 2.5, and call it cloth. Now if we display it, you see it's on the ground. If we put uh, this one on the collider, you see, we don't want it on the floor. So we're gonna change the center that it's right on top of the head of our character. So that now we can put down a vellum configure cloth, this one. And we wire this one in. And we're gonna set the stiffness to 1.5, uh, 1.2 and the bend to 1.5. Everything else we leave as is for now. Now we want to set an initial state because we don't want the simulation to start with a cloth on top of the uh, floating on top of a character. So we put down a vellum brush node and we wire in the geometry and the constraints. And now because we want to set the initial state using our character. We wire in the collider, which is the ground and the character. And we're gonna put the view flag on the vellum, br vellum brush. But before we're gonna use the vellum brush to set the initial state, we're gonna put a remesh node in between our cloth and the vellum and set it to 0 0.02. So that we get a better mesh for the simulation. After putting the remesh, we can also put a UV texture. It's important that you do that before you set the initial state, because if you have set an initial state, everything above here doesn't really matter anymore. So remember to put a UV texture before you set the initial state. Now we can select the vellum brush and click on this little gizmo icon here, and it will show us a view where we can set an initial state. We can either brush the cloth right in the viewport, there are mil multiple uh, brush options, or if we reset all changes, we can press G and let it simulate, press G again to make it stop and set the rest state. Now all we need is a solver to run the simulation. For that, we're gonna place a dotnet and wire in the geometry as well as the constraints. 
For a better overview, we can also put two nulls and call one geo and one constraint. Now we're going to jump into the .NET. In here, we're going to need a few things. First, we're going to need a multi-solver and a vellum solver. A vellum object. Then a static object as collider and a crown plane as collider. We're going to merge these two and merge them again. Uh, here it's important that the left one is the collider and the right one is the solver because left inputs affect the right inputs. And we're going to add gravity. And now we're almost done. We need to select in the static object, we need to select our collider and tick export relative path and tick use deforming geometry because this one is deforming. Then in the vellum object, we're going to select our GU and in the initial constraints, we're going to select the constraints. Remember to tick export relative path. And now if we select the vellum solver, we can put the sub steps to about three. Should be fine. If we jump out of the solver now and play the simulation, you should see it working. As you can see, we have a problem here because the hand is clipping through our cloth. The fella here has really pointy fingers, which makes the whole thing <laughs> a little bit difficult. But we should be able to fix this by adding thickness to the cloth in the vellum cloth configure. We can scroll up and find the edge length scale. If we press visualize thickness, you can see here this little balls where you can see how thick the cloth is. And if we put this to, let's say, 0.5, the thing becomes a lot thicker. But now, because we changed the initial cloth, we have to reset the initial state as well, because it still uses the old geometry. So we click reset all changes and gonna rerun the thing again with pressing G. Click set rest state again. And now if we run the simulation, you can see that the fingers aren't clipping through the cloth anymore. In the .NET output, we can select just the vellum object so that we don't export the colliders and the ground object as well. After that, we can put a file cache and wire it in. Now we can save to disk. This will take a minute or two. Now we can play the cache and as you can see, the simulation is running fine. We have one problem left and it's that the simulation is little, looking a little bit blocky and low resolution. And we don't want to run a simulation with a lot of subdivisions because that's going to be really heavy and take a lot of time. So what we can do is put a vellum post process node, wire it in and put a display flag on there and we can add subdivisions. We need to add loop subdivisions so that our UVs stay intact and we can add two even so it gets really, really smooth. Even going further a little bit, we can add a little bit of blur. And there we go. We have a finished simulation. Now you can export it as an alembic using a ROP alembic output. Wire it in, select render frame range, and that's it. You can put a name here, but don't forget to put 
.abc, otherwise it won't recognize the file as Alembic. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed. And if there's enough interest, I'm going to make a second part showing how I rendered the shot using Unreal Engine. If you would be interested in that, leave a comment and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.